So in the military base, which is a National Guard uh, base, Gendarmerie, um, we spent again three years. And what was unique about the base was that the school was all the way in the back. And, you know, we used to see uh, such a long paved road through a military uh, campaign, or I'm sorry, a military camp that was quite in attractive. Uh, I believe the French had, had, had built that base um, for them. And I remember us having a lot of um, activities, whether it was soccer, what we call, but football. And we would use the, the, most, the most simple things to play football with, um, like the, the, a seed of, of, uh, of a fruit, because we couldn't bring the actual football. In most cases, we had to be more creative. So we would use um, a seed of a fruit that was maybe half the size of a, a tennis ball, and we would, we would use that at times. Um, not on sand, but on, on the concrete, because these buildings were definitely, again, built in a very uh, formidable manner for uh, the 80s, again, early 80s, now that I think more of it. But the other thing was that um, for those who understand the concept of Jean de Romarie, uh, that means that there is military um, training, but there is administrative, a lot of administrative policy training. And that means that they had a lot of uh, detective dogs. They had a lot of uh, German shepherds. So we would, we would spend time observing them train their German shepherds. So I just thought um, that would be important because Al now way watching them uh, train the German shepherds, I do not remember the exact story and how it really did transpire, um, but uh, this uh, school's older grade boys decided to start on us younger boys. In other words, some, some, some bullying uh, began to form and a, uh, a battle or a skirmish broke out, and it was purely about those who were in the second grade and those who were in the fifth grade were at it. I remember um, between the school and where the dogs, the detective dogs were kept, there was you know, an open field that consisted basically of, of sand and this particular type of fruit known as neo. And um, it is, again, almost the size of that, uh, uh, well, half the size of, the full fruit can be about a size or even bigger than the size of a tennis ball. Um, but, you know, the, just the seed, it, you know, it just varies. Now, when this battle broke out, there are a lot of these fruits because this is a, a type of uh, fruit that grows on a bushy plant. And so, you know, we were just pulling those fruits off and it, it, it just broke out in that fashion. And I think we, we set it up so that the following day we would, we would meet there again and we would go at it during the recreation. And we did that for a few days until one day... I walked into my classroom from being at one of those battles <laughs> and I saw a whole line of boys and I was also instructed to join the line. <laughs> and that was for those that were going to get Thunder Parkat. That's what they call it in Africa, Thunder Parkat. Uh, luckily for me, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, being in SAS Quran school under sitting some. I was always getting a whoop because in Isaias, once we were transferred out of the quarters of the father, we were placed basically into the general population. 
And the concept is that, of course, we're American and, you know, we have this Americanization on our minds and how we talk and, you know, we have all this and all that. You can do that in the private quarters, but once you get into the general population, you're one of us. <laughs> you know, you know, valuable, your value is no higher than ours. You're not in no private quarters anymore. And so as we have it now, I mean, we still talk among ourselves. Like back then, every single day, you knew you were going to cry at least one time. When you woke up in the morning, you knew at least one time at that day, you were going to get a whooping somehow, somewhere. You just didn't know where it was going to come from. You knew someone was going to give you a whooping. You just didn't know the circumstances. And it was like that for a while. Um, but getting back to when I was put in the queue, it was, and I was one of the, I was actually at one point, the class president, if I wasn't the class president at that time, I cannot remember who was. Um, Madame Job Nyang was, was a classmate. She was really well. Of course, Musin Jai, the one who would come to tutor us, would later on be my teacher practically for two out of the three years. And so, you know, he would still come and tutor and he would really, you know, make sure that, I, you know, we, we both had our, our homework and our assignments prepared, ready to go. We were getting good grades and so on. Um, but that day I got put in the queue and I got Tandr Parkat. Anybody who doesn't know what Tandr Parkat means, uh, you're going to get a whooping. You're going to get a whooping. They call it what they call it. That means that you will be whooped by four. So uh, they called four students to hold uh, your, your arms and your legs or basically in the air while the teacher has a way with your behind, behind you. So you're all up in the air being held, um, spread out by four people, and the teacher is uh, usually he's using a car belt. Yeah, that's what it is, a car belt. Uh, you know, the rubber car belts that are inside the car, when you cut them, that made a good whooping belt. So that's what that's what he would use. That That's how Tandar Prakad, if I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm completely against uh, corporal punishment under uh, the rules of the Quranic uh, Association of the Hafid Society at that time. Corporal punishment for Quranic teaching has been absolutely abrogated completely. Um, but, uh, yes, this is the way that we would be disciplined at the French school. And obviously, you know, those of us who are familiar, those of us who are aware, um, military parades, so you have a lot of preparation with that, you know. And uh, then there was always the situation in Casamas, which is, even until today, there is still... Um, civil war in Senegal. A lot of people do not know, but there's been a civil war there for over 40 years. And, you know, a lot of times they would deploy from that military base to go to Cosmos. Um, we actually do have one of our extended uh, brothers who is uh, a general of that regiment because, you know, they were among the boys and over time they, they raised from the ranks of Gobi just like private and they went all the way up to general today they're general this is the last i heard maybe they retired i can't anyway getting back to it um there were a few things that happened at that school which opened up my eyes as well as many of us and i think uh, from a moral standpoint we have to understand that um uh, morally speaking we have a lot more to give than we actually have to receive. So we should really work on that because that's where I was introduced to the the South African apartheid. I remember, you know, it was all over the, you know, it was instructed for all the teachers to write it out and have us, you know, read over it in French. L'apartheid et une crème contre l'humanité which means that uh, apartheid is a crime against humanity, all right? So Israel remembers that. And uh, the other thing was, you know, Kier Katarven Sis and how they, you know, gained, well, they told all the kids, you know, all of us uh, to, you know, support 
the Senegalese team needed support. And um, when you come to school tomorrow, tell your parents to send support. So, the, the, you know, the, the, uh, the school was from primary one to all through high school. Yeah, you could get, you know, you could, you could, so it's 12 grades in that school. Um, there were at least, in those 12 grades, they, they had to be at least 10,000 in those, because if you, if you have 12 grades, 10,000 would have been, okay, let me just say that it was just a very populated school. I don't want to get into how many numbers there were. Um, but especially going back then and you know being at that age so i don't even want to go there but i will say there were a lot of uh, students and we all brought something to support the you know the senegalese team going to the african cup of nations in 1986 and where they beat the hosting uh country which was egypt so that much i remember as well and obviously you know picking up french there for three years and I've already referred to where it was. I've already talked about, um, you know, teachers. Oh, so there was another incident where um, this was after my arm got broken. A bully, there's always some type of bully going on in schools. <laughs> Wanted to take advantage. Somehow, you know, the boys jumped them. Yeah, they, they, that's when they were known for all for one and one for all. That's where the model of the musketeers became. <laughs> the model of the boys and so from there on out it it just seemed as if you know things had had changed now we started to become you know seasoned senegalese okay i mean we had the, the father's last name fal and we were going to the schools where his children were going our brothers and sisters you know we, we spent with umukala and they file these are names of the fem some females, and I need to mention more um, because they really are uh, important to know and to understand the uh, the surrounding based on the people who are there. Um, but they, you know, one hundred percent, they don't speak no English at all. Even until today, they still don't speak English. We just communicate in Wolof. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Now, I feel like. When we became very comfortable in this type of lifestyle, yes, we were taking some Quran. We were going to French school mainly. We were learning a lot of Wolof. We were getting our tales handled to us uh, or handed to us. So, you know, the, we, we just got comfortable with that. Again, when I woke up, and we all agree today, there are about five of us who can literally say, when we went to sleep back then and woke up, we would just think about, where our beating was going to come from. But we knew we were going to get it. It was, going to, it was either going to be from one of the elders. It was going to either be from the direction of sitting Samba, who has the whoop, or it was going to be from one of our own, like, peers, right, who decided, you know, that they had enough with us on whatever it is that we were doing. Um, being that there are two garages uh, on each side of the compound of AKF, again, these are tractor trailer garages. We would venture there when times were out. And we would like to find what is known as fin de fer. It's almost um, a, a form of aluminum that is real skinny, thin. However, we used to be able to make uh, going carts, rolling carts, and all type of toys with them. Very, very creative manner. How it used to be done. Now, at times, the elders would come and they would just bully us into submission. Uh, they just take, for example, if it was a fan, but sometimes we, you know, we, we created, the, we'll, we're able to put, piece together a fan or a car or a truck, some cases um, parachutes, um, other cases we had almost like a, um, I'm trying to remember, well, there was always an activity going around in the, the garden. The garden is all the way in the back of the entire compound and it's situated also literally on each side or it, it is the center between the two um, garages. Um, so, you know, we had that fair share of our um, masculinity touch and there were a lot of questions about our masculinity because in America, 
most of us are circumcised at the hospital, especially when we're Muslim, we ask, do you want your child circumcised? Yes, circumcise and take them. Um, so we're circumcised like that at the hospital. In Africa, back in 82, they were not sure because it's not the same in Africa, even until today. A child can be born, a baby boy, particularly, meticulously, specifically, would be born. And, you know, this child is not, uh, they, they, are, they are still um, not circumcised, obviously, because they've just been born, and they let them go on for years and years and years. So one of my earlier memories of the combined French-Arabic uh, Quran school and whatever's going on at the camp, um, all of a sudden, I just saw a bunch of my peers dressed up as some something I'd never seen before, and it's what happened when everybody gets circumcised. So about five or six, maybe seven. So we have uh, Musa Fal Dudugay, Papa Job. This is the three musketeers. Sheikh Huna was there. That's four. Tafa Fal is there. That's five. Um, if I'm forgetting somebody, I apologize, young men, but this is this is as much as I, as I can say. So it's like this robe, it's this beige robe, and imagine you are, you are a guy, you are a man, you know, <laughs> and you are placed into a white robe that has something that you tie. You're not allowed to wear pants because you've been circumcised, and you wear also a white hat. Like you know, a, a hat, a beige hat that goes along with that, with that robe, and you literally are. If anybody is, you know, uh, questioning about it, if you go, Google circumcised Senegalese boys, dress, yeah, because you want to see how they look, and it's you know. So one day we just come out and we're like, what is all of this? You know, these guys are wearing. I mean, what do we miss? You know, what's what's going on here? And the crazy part about it is. We will begin to look at, are you all circumcised? And remember, we are, I'm at least 11 years old, you're asking me. I'm at least 10 years old, and you're asking me to show you so you can make sure that you know that I am or I'm not circumcised. That's the problem. But anyway, I think that um, will um, be very, very interesting because as we talk, about that, not too long, we get a phone call from Malika Mona Muhammad. Maybe after a good year and a half, I mean, I didn't talk to my mother literally since I had landed. At least, a, well, at least, well, I would, I would, I would almost want to say two years. I hadn't spoken to her, and then she calls. Well, she calls in '85. We get there in '83, so it is two years technically. However, um, she gets on the phone and, you know, she, she says, you know, she, she says what she says. But, of course, having a primary school or even having first grade education and being in an environment where no one else speaks that language, which is English, you tend to, you know, to forget a lot of vocabulary. Um, but I remember, you know, the message was that she had um, given a birth to my sister, my youngest sister. Uh, and that she would be coming to visit us soon. So I think I will, uh, I will, it would be fair for everyone to um, say subhanakallahumma bihamdik wa tabaraka rabbik because we're going to close it out now until the next one. Um, next we will try to get as far as Luga, but we will see how that works out. Uh, over and out, your humble air orator, Muhammad Israel. The Allied Coalition, Mr. Corrin, Spiritual Division Forces.